This is CBN News Watch. Thank you so much for joining us in this first edition of CBN News Watch for Tuesday, August 27th. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead in this half hour, the first multi million dollar judgment in an opioid lawsuit, a case of accountability versus blame. Tracking the storm, Dorian, as she moves toward Puerto Rico, a culture of death being challenged in the Netherlands, a turn toward life for one abortion doctor. We have his story in Healthy Living. We have all these stories and much more in this half hour of CBN News Watch. We're going to begin right now with drug maker Johnson & Johnson vowing to appeal a judge's decision that it must pay $575 million to the state of Oklahoma for aggressively marketing addictive painkillers to doctors and to patients. It's a landmark ruling against, quote, false misleading marketing campaigns that led to addiction and death and the first case to hold a drug maker responsible for the devastation of the opioid crisis. Johnson & Johnson will finally be held accountable for thousands of deaths and addiction caused by their activities. The ruling falls short of Oklahoma's demand for $17 billion. Johnson & Johnson does plan to appeal. We have sympathy for all who suffer from substance abuse. But Johnson and Johnson did not cause the opioid abuse crisis here in Oklahoma or anywhere in this country. 48 states and more than 2,000 local and tribal governments have lawsuits pending against drug makers. Turning now to the presidential politics, where President Trump could face new opponents within his own party. CBN Capitol Hill correspondent Abigail Robertson has the story. Former Representative Joe Walsh of Illinois is now the second Republican to challenge President Trump for the 2020 Republican nomination. I'm going to run for president. The conservative radio host, who served only one term in the House before being defeated, supported Trump in 2016. But now Walsh calls the president incompetent and erratic. I'm running because he's unfit. Somebody needs to step up. And there needs to be an alternative. The country is sick of this guy's tantrum. He's, he's a child. Former Massachusetts GOP Governor Bill Weld announced his candidacy on Twitter last April. And my objective is to bring in more unaffiliated independent voters who can vote in those states uh, and even Democrats. I, I make the case to them that you Democrats, if you're not satisfied with Mr. Trump's performance in office, you can vote against him twice, once for me in the primary and then for whoever you want in the general. Others said to be considering a run for the White House include former South Carolina Governor and Congressman Mark Sanford and former Ohio Governor John Kasich. These GOP challenges seem to be a long shot, given an August Gallup poll which shows Trump with an 88 percent approval rating among Republicans. Meanwhile, former Vice President Joe Biden still holds the lead in national polling of Democrats, but Senator Elizabeth Warren is consistently gaining ground. I've been to 26 states and Puerto Rico, blue states, red states, red parts of blue states, all of it. The field of Democrats might narrow further this week, as Wednesday marks the final day candidates can qualify for the September debate. So far, 10 have made the cut, but it could be the end of the line for quite a few others still struggling to meet the polling and financial threshold. Reporting from Washington, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Tropical Storm Dorian is moving through the Caribbean Sea, bringing heavy rainfall and gusty winds to the Lesser Antilles. AccuWeather meteorologist says it is now tracking toward Puerto Rico and Hispaniola by midweek, and it could reach hurricane force winds by the time it reaches Puerto Rico, where people are still trying to recover from the destruction from Hurricane Maria back in 2017. Forecasters say if the storm moves away from Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, it could strengthen and become a hurricane threatening southeast Florida by the weekend. Efforts to tack tackle the massive wildfires continue in the Amazon rainforest as global concern rises. Brazil's satellite monitoring agency has forced more than 41,000 fires in the Amazon region so far this year, with more than half of those coming this month alone. Experts say most of the fires were set by farmers or ranchers clearing existing farmland. 
Seven nations, including the U.S., have sent reinforcements or are preparing to help Brazil battle the fires and repair the damage. A Colorado based global super tanker plane was sent in to help ground crews in Bolivia. The plane holds about 19,000 gallons of water, which it drops on stretches of rainforest about a quarter of a mile at a time. Environmental activists across the world are crying out, saying the fires could have a lasting impact on the world and more needs to be done. The Amazon produces 20 percent of the world's oxygen. A landmark euthanasia trial continues in the Netherlands tomorrow. The case centers on a 74-year-old woman euthanized three years ago, but she might have changed her mind. Doctors are now accused of make, not making a sufficient effort to find out. CBN's Dale Hurd gives us a closer look at the law in Belgium and what it means for the sanctity of human life. Belgium has long been famous for food, like waffles and chocolate. But now it's becoming famous for something else. Belgium has one of the most liberal euthanasia laws in the world. You could end your life here by simply telling a doctor that you have unbearable physical or mental suffering. Terminally ill children of any age can receive a lethal injection if their parents agree with the child's wishes. Tom Mortier's mother was euthanized in 2012 because even though physically healthy, she was said to be incurably depressed. My mother, who was physically healthy because of her mental problems, received a lethal injection from an oncologist. It was done without his or his family's knowledge. He was only told by the hospital the day after his mother was killed. My mother had several mental problems. She had to cope with depression throughout her life. She was treated for years by a psychiatrist. And the contact between us was broken. A year later, she received a lethal injection. Mortier filed a complaint with the medical board and then with a prosecutor, but was turned away. With the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, Mortier appealed his case to the European Court of Human Rights, which has agreed to hear it. His legal counsel is Robert Clark. Like, how can a physically healthy woman who has struggled with depression, who's had good days and who's had bad days, how can someone like that be euthanized in a democratic Western country uh, without the family members even being aware that it was happening? Something that makes this case even more disturbing is that the doctor who euthanized the woman sits on the very government body that is supposed to oversee the euthanasia law. The doctor, Vims Distelmans, who some have compared to the late Dr. Jack Kevorkian, once led a euthanasia tour of Auschwitz under the theme, Death with Dignity. Distelmans is co-chairman of Belgium's Euthanasia Commission. We have a significant conflict of interest where someone is essentially acting as judge and executioner um, in his own cases. When Distelmans' commission did nothing after a dementia patient was euthanized without asking to die, one doctor quit the panel, writing that he did not want to be part of a committee that deliberately violates the law. There are now more than 13,000 euthanasia cases that this commission has reviewed. And in those 13,000, I'm aware of now one which has been referred to the prosecutor. As ethical safeguards have fallen in Belgium, some say killing has become a part of medical care. We began to offer death as a medical solution even for non-terminal cases. It is a problem. I have heard about people who were offered euthanasia even though they were not even considering it. The types of conditions, the, the things that would qualify someone for euthanasia are being pushed further and further out. In the most recent reporting period, there were euthanasias carried out on children as young as 17, um, 11 and 9. The supply of euthanasia stirs the demand. What you see is that uh, for an increasing amount of people, euthanasia becomes the default way to die. When we find someone who's requesting to die, who's standing on the proverbial edge of a bridge, and instead of trying to talk them down, the, the state is pushing them off. Clark says Belgium is now the ultimate cautionary tale for any nation that wants to legalize euthanasia. And I think we have to ask ourselves, is that the kind of society that we want to live in? Or do we want to live in a society with laws that say that vulnerable life should be protected and that all life, no matter what stage and no matter the health of the person, has dignity and value? Dale Hurd, CBN News, Brussels. 
Islamic extremists continue to target and murder Christians in Afri Africa's northeastern Burkina Faso region. It was the fifth attack against Christians this year in the same area of the nation. So far in 2019, 20 Christians have been killed by Islamic extremists. Reportedly, when the attackers saw they were wearing crosses, the four men were singled out and executed. Hillsong worship leader Chelsea Taylor is recovering well from a sudden brain aneurysm. So well, in fact, many are calling it miraculous. Chelsea is awake and talking, and she declared, see you Sunday after being visited by one of the church's pastoral staff. Her Hillsong family thanked the fans for storming heaven on her behalf and asked for the prayers to continue for her full recovery. Coming up, a closer look at the fallout from the 60s sexual revolution, and it could be the root of today's culture war over identity. Stay with us. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it. I came to give you life. Life to the fullest. Life in your family. Life in your finances. Life in your body, mind, and spirit. Life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Want to be a part of a community that inspires your spiritual growth while winning prizes? The all-new MyCBN app. Connect with the community for prayer and encouragement. Track and set spiritual goals. Enjoy conversation starters with friends and family. And collect points to win prizes. The all-new MyCBN app. A great place to belong. Download the app at cbn.com slash mobile. Grow. Connect. Have fun. The all-new MyCBN app. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs, from health to entertainment, you won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place, from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Check your local listings or visit cbnnewschannel.com. Come home to the sounds of Southern Gospel from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites like the Gaithers, the Crab Family, and bluegrass sounds like Mountain Faith. So make yourself at home with the all-new CBN Southern Gospel, now available at CBNRadio.com. From mass shootings to high divorce rates to Christians falling away from their faith, some would say America appears to be falling apart at the seams of our cultural fabric. Our Heather Sells spoke with one author about what she believes got us to where we are as a nation today. The greatest issues of our time are at the heart of a modern cultural war. Mary Eberstadt, author of Primal Screams, How the Sexual Revolution Created Identity Politics, believe some of America's biggest problems can be traced back to another huge culture war from the 60s. She joins us now. Mary, thanks for uh, being with us today. You say that our nation has an identity crisis and the biggest question of all time is who am I? How do you see this playing out right now in the country? Well, identity politics has become absolutely unavoidable, whether we're talking about uh, political parties or institutions of higher education. We're all familiar with uh, the arguments about my gender identity, my ethnic identity, et cetera. So what I try to do in the book is take a step back and say, why is there this generalized panic over who am I? This is really unique to our time. And I think the answer is that this stems from the breakdown of the family in the 1960s uh, and onward. 
which took away the usual way of answering this question, who am I? Because for many people in our time, the idea that I am a, a daughter, I am a mother, I am a cousin without an asterisk is an idea that's harder to come by. So that, I think, is what unites all the different identity firsters, whether they're on the left or the right, whether it's about gender or ethnicity. There's this passionate flight to collective identities, and I think it's all coming from the same primordial place. Okay, and talk a little bit more about that, because there could be a number of causes to this identity crisis that we're having right now, but why do you think it is rooted in the sexual revolution? Well, let's stipulate first that, of course, there is racism, there is sexism, there are other forms of cruelty, and these things are always and everywhere to be opposed. But at the same time, they don't look to be the font of identity politics taken singly, any one of those things. Identity politics begins, sociologists agree, with a document published in 1977 by a group of African-American feminists. It was the first expression of identity politics, which they took to mean, we must band together to fight for our interests because no one else has our back. And that's a paraphrase of what they say in the document. And what's interesting about that and deeply sad about that is that for many people, when they think about who has their backs, who wants what's best for them, we think first of the family. But this document is an expression, 1977, the first generation to come of age after the sexual revolution. It's an expression of a time when familial identity is already eroding so much that people feel like their best refuge is to cling to those who are like them. And in the years since then, we've seen an explosion of this kind of identitarianism, again, where people are fleeing into these collective identities because these identities offer them something that they're not finding elsewhere and that used to be found at home. Mm, that is so sad. What do you think is the answer to this national fixation on identity at this point in time? Well, you know, it's like with any malady. If you can't name it correctly, if you don't get the diagnosis right, you're not going to get the solution. And the reason I wrote Primal Screams is to try and raise awareness that What's going on in identity politics is not politics as usual. It's something much deeper. And this feeling, especially on the part of the young, that they are at sea, that they don't know who they are, is being exploited politically, I think, by people who are able to leverage that into votes and collective identities. So the first thing to do, really, is to raise awareness of what's going on in identity politics and uh, hold a mirror up to people so that maybe some people will have this aha moment, like, oh, that's why I think the way I do. It's not because I can't think independently of my ethnicity or my gender or some other class to which I belong. It's because uh, our society has become unmoored from a firm sense of self. So my hope is that the book will help some people to recover exactly that, a deeper understanding of the human person. All right, Mary Eberstadt, author of Primal Screams, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Still ahead, what caused an abortion doctor to change his mind and fight for the lives of babies? We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. As the nations rage, you can stand with Israel. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. Call 1-800-700-7000 and get to life. This is our nature as a country. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary, To Life. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he has, which color he is, this is what I'm doing. Support Israel in their time of need. Get to Life, now available on DVD. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. And I wish that other people throughout the world could see this side of Israel. 
Orphans Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? A doctor who performed hundreds of abortions is now speaking out against the practice. CBN's health reporter Lori Johnson spoke with Dr. Haywood Robinson about how an encounter with Jesus Christ caused him to change his mind about abortion and even travel the country speaking out against it. Here's a look at her interview. Abortion pays well and the way it would work, the doctor would get a split of, of the fee, usually about half. And the more you do, the more money you get. And it's a very depersonalized uh, uh, situation. The first time you meet these patients, you've never, you, you meet them in that procedure room. Mm. You don't know if they've had informed consent. You don't even know if they've been coerced. You come in there, you do your duty, so to speak, and you don't want to build a relationship with that patient because I think in your heart you know you're doing them a disservice. This whole abortion war or holocaust is the biggest holocaust in human history. Never have we had something that is global and so deadly. Approximately 60 million, that's six zero million babies are aborted annually on the planet Earth. There is nothing in human history like that amount of death. And so how many would you do, for example, it, in a day? It could vary. Uh, some days it may only be five to seven. On a quote-unquote good day, it might be 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. um, but for our audience needs to know that if you were to take the money variable out of this whole abortion industry, we wouldn't be sitting here even discussing the matter. This whole war on babies is fueled by money. It's a very very lucrative business, very lucrative. It's so wonderful to hear you talk so candidly about this because you were on the inside. Have you ever estimated how many abortions you performed overall? And you know, I, I don't know. The best I could do is say well over the span of approximately three, four years. And if I were doing maybe uh, five, a week, I could probably get to some number of, of, a, of a few hundred. Um, but just one is an absolute tragedy because each one of those babies was uh, conceived really by God and they had a purpose. And we robbed them of that, of that purpose. And it's uh, unfortunate. The other thing we need to be aware of as physicians who are here to minister to people, we have committed a, a gross uh, violation of the public trust because what we were called to do was protect all life and not just uh, rich or poor or uh, born versus pre-born. It's all life that we were, we were called to save. And it's, it's horrible. I believe uh, as the Lord has saved me and the Lord has worked with my wife that he's going to use this abortion issue we're going to get it overturned in the United States. And our country is going to be the first developed country to push back on abortion. And you can see the full interview with Dr. Robinson this, e Dr. Robinson this evening on Healthy Living. It begins at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time on the CBN News Channel. Coming up, crosses on a hillside. The numbers grow across generations as a symbol of one nation's faith and determination to endure. Stay with us.
I am Region's first ROTC graduate student. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. More than 200,000 crosses are standing tall on a hill in Lithuania serving a unique purpose. The collection is acting as a retreat for people in the area and visitors looking for inner peace. The, pilgr the pilgrimage site displays crosses of all sizes. The first were put up back in 1863. Those in the area say they've become a symbol of resistance in the face of brutal occupation in this Baltic country and that it's faced actually for centuries. This place is a symbol uh, f uh, about, the, about the faith, about uh, believing in, 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 a, in a future that uh, uh, Lithuanians can uh, fight for, uh, for freedom in a different, uh, different ways. And uh, yeah, this place was destroyed for five times maybe, and it was rebuilt all the time, every time it was rebuilt. Amen. Time now for your Tuesday Tweetable, and today I leave you with this message to post, tag, tweet, and share with those in your circle. If you're looking in the mirror and don't like what you see, or perhaps you're looking at the flaws in the life of someone else, know this, trash in your eyes is treasure in the eyes of God. He can take your mess and give you a message and a miracle. With that word, I encourage you to make today a terrific Tuesday. That is going to do it for this first edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can find more on our news programs on the CBN News Channel anytime or online at CBNNews.com. We'd also like to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. The address is newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.